Um, particular thanks to Pauline for um, encouraging me to do it in the first place because last year was incredibly busy uh, for me and I just wasn't getting around to doing it. So it was Pauline's encouragement to, to do it again that made, meant it got done before the end of the year uh, and brings us brings us to here in terms of uh, being able to share the share the findings with you. So thank you to Pauline and for putting this talk on uh, as well, which is a great opportunity to talk to you about it. Uh, so the web address is there for the Morris Census. There's lots more information about all the stuff I'm talking about uh, on the website. Um, so please go there if you'd like to see more on the website. Um, but let's dive in. So what is the Morris Census or the 2023 Morris Census? So um, it was an idea I had about nine or ten years ago now, which feels like a long time. But it was um, it's a it's an online survey uh, designed to collect information from Morris sides. Um, I should say Morris sides, sword dancing sides, step dancing sides, Appalachian sides, mama's sides, all the sorts of sides that are members of Morris, the three Morris organizations. So all the sorts of um, things, sides that are uh, our members. Uh, that's the kind of uh, sampling frame, if you like. Uh, it's called the Morris Census for simpleness and ease, but uh, it tends to put off sword dancers and things like that from completing it. So uh, swings and roundabouts. But uh, it's yeah, that's why it's uh, why it's there is to collect information from sides uh, across the UK and around the world. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be focusing on the UK uh, today. So thank you for coming, international audiences. I won't be kind of talking about the international scene, but there's lots of data collected about uh, sides uh, from all over the world, uh, which are re represented in the data uh, that sits underneath this. So the idea of the survey is that it's a survey about sides. So it can be completed by one member of the side on behalf of the rest of the side. Um, that necessarily restricts and limits what the survey can focus on because it has to be about the side rather than coming into kind of personal factors about you know why an individual's started dancing or what they uh you know more personal things about engagement with morris so it's very much about sides and then restricted uh to those things that you can ask about that a member of a side would reasonably know about the rest of their side collectively um so as i said i've been doing this for 10 years now uh i first uh did a survey in 2014 three years later felt about the right time to do another one so i did another one in 2017 and then it's been going every three years since. So we're on to 2026 next. Uh, and this is the fourth installment in 2023. Um, the, the data comes from lots of different sides. Uh, so I build a database of all the sides that are registered with uh, Morris organizations and that have been active in the past. And then I cross check all the responses against that. So you can see what's there and what isn't there. So who's, who's missing. Um, and what types of sides are missing. And then you can reweight the data so that it's representative of UK sides. So this data is kind of reweighted to make sure that it's representative as far as possible of the sides in the UK. But also, whenever you're uh, thinking about a survey's reliability or validity, it's important to think about the response rate, how many of the sides uh, responded. Um, and we know this from the UK because there's a good records of which are the current active sides and members of Morris organizations. Uh, and that response rate has actually been rising over time. So uh, originally it was 64% uh, of sides in that first survey, but um, in the most recent survey, it was the best response rate yet with 76% of sides uh, responding, which is really, really good. So 581 out of the 767 sides are currently, or were currently active as of whenever I collected the data. Uh, at the end of last year. Um, but it's also important to say the total number of UK sides uh, fell in 2023 compared to when the last time I measured it in 2020. Um, I think a lot of sides, uh, either during or after the pandemic, uh, decided to call it a day. Um, so we've seen a big uh, a drop in the number of sides, uh, whereas that the number of sides had been growing over time up to 2020. So it gives a good picture of all the sides in the UK, uh, because nearly three quarters or more than three quarters uh, responded to the most recent survey, and then the rest are represented through the statistical weighting. So in terms of the different styles that uh, sides are performing, uh, so Cotswold uh, remains the most commonly uh, danced style by 40% of sides with 7% of sides uh, dancing occasionally. Um, 
Border is the second most, and as I'll show in a minute, has been growing over time uh, with 26% of sides uh, doing it regularly and 13% uh, occasionally. Uh, so lots of other uh, styles represented here in the data, um, both sides doing uh, dance, dancing styles regularly and also occasionally. So this, the totals don't add up to 100 because obviously sides can do multiple things, um, but typically sides are kind of doing one or two things. Uh, for example, mumming is quite a regular, well, quite a frequent occasional uh, uh, dance, uh, performance that sides do alongside another more regular uh, thing. So how's this been changing over time? Uh, so as I said, border uh, has been growing over time in terms of the uh, representation among sides. So from 34% nearly 10 years ago to 39% in the most recent data. Um, others have been kind of moving up and down. Um, although the most significant one, I think, is the reduc is the, the fall in the number of wrapper sides in the last uh, kind of between 2020 and 2023. So it seems like quite a few. Uh, may have uh, may have folded um, during the pandemic, uh, so that dropped from twelve percent to ten percent in the most recent data. Um, but generally, yeah, border rising over time and everything else kind of um, up a bit, down a bit. So there's also lots of questions in there about demographics of members. Um, so the number of uh, members. Oh, hang on. Uh, Oh, right. So yeah, uh, the number of members. So the original purpose for um, for starting this survey was to kind of answer the question, how many Morris dancers are there in the UK? Uh, which seems like a quite straightforward question to answer, but is um, surprisingly difficult when you think about the people who are in multiple teams uh, and, you know, how do you get a good estimate of what's the average number of uh, dancers in a, uh, members in a side and how many sides are there? So all this information has to come together which uh, I do and collect through the survey. So in terms of the average side of a UK, uh, size of a UK side, it's about 18 members. Um, some types of dancing have larger sides, uh, others have smaller. So clog step and appellation tend to be individual dances. You may be less surprised that they're quite uh, smaller uh, than, uh, so for example, border sides, which uh, 21 uh, on, on average number of members per side. But when you get on to the total number um, estimated by combining the number of sides, the number of members in a side, the number of uh, members who dance in more than one side, various other bits, um, then we get to an estimate of 12,600 uh, dancers in the UK in the most recent survey. And that's down 1,000 uh, from the previous measure in 2020. So it had been rising up until then, and then it fell. So that's the same kind of pattern as the number of sides uh, has been following, uh, kind of steadily rising and then falling in 2023 compared to the previous um, survey. And that's primarily what's driving it is the change in the number of sides rather than sides getting smaller. Although uh, on average, sides have got slightly smaller um, as well. But that's, you know, a considerable drop in three years, uh, a thousand fewer uh, people being members of a Morris side. Uh, we also collect data on demographics, so gender and age and various other bits that I'll come on to. Um, so gender, uh, we've been collecting for since 2014. Uh, and in 2020, I added an additional uh, category uh, by popular demand uh, to kind of capture uh, non, non male, non female, kind of non binary or other um, categories. But the broad uh, sweep of the data over the years has shown a, a, an increase in the proportion of women who are members of sides and a reduction in the number of men over, over time. So 46% up to 51% and for men down from 54% to 49% over time. So there are now more officially more women Morris dancers in the UK than there are men. Um, the additional category has also grown slightly, but it's very, very small, 0.5, 08 uh, uh, in the most recent data. So that's quite a significant uh, change uh, and quite a significant um, threshold to cross in terms of there being more women dancers than men um, to think back to the position 50 years ago where uh, things were different uh, and 
obviously come a long way since then. So the biggest changes in gender composition have been in the Morris ring. Um, so the, uh, yeah, sides in the Morris Federation and Open Morris haven't changed uh, too much. And this is the proportion of members who are female. Um, and actually it's fallen ever so slightly in, um, in the Open Morris over time. But there's been a big increase in the Morris ring. Um, obviously there have been constitutional changes over the years, so 2011 changing uh, the to allow uh, female musicians, uh, and in 2018 removing all references to gender uh, entirely, uh, and that has seen an increase. Uh, so from three percent of members being female uh, back in 2014, up to uh, in 2023, 18 percent of members uh, being female in Morris Ring sides. Um, so here again, this is the this is the changes in terms of side composition. So the kind of overall, are you an all male side or a all female side or a mixed side? Like, how would you describe the side rather than just the proportion of members? Um, and you can see there's been a big change. So this is just the Morris ring. 42% of ring sides have made some change to their rules on gender of members in the last uh, five, 10 years. Uh, and you can see there the proportion of sides that describe themselves as all male dancers has gone from 98% to 59%. So really big uh, shifts, really big changes um, happening among Morris uh, ring sides. Um, so when, when sides indicated that they had made a change to their uh, gender policy, so they're you know, changing from uh, all male to be a mixed side has been one of the most common uh, changes. Uh, the survey asked what their what their reasons for making that change were, uh, and the primary reason was for most sides to increase recruitment, uh, but some sides also said it was about promoting equality, or actually sometimes just um, because someone had requested to join and they saw no reason not to change it. So it was a kind of prompt from uh, from someone uh, wanting to uh, to join who who couldn't under the existing rules. So a variety of reasons, but recruitment seemed to be a really major reason for a lot of sides. So moving on to uh, the age distribution. Um, so this is collected in categories uh, because it can be challenging to guess people's ages when you're guessing an entire side on your own, uh, which I completely understand and completely respect, but you know, any any side member or bagman's uh, guess of the age distribution is much better than my guess and my guess, uh, you know, sitting at home not knowing anything about the side the side in question. So um, it's uh, it, it's um, pleasing that so many sides have a go at guessing their age distribution or or indeed collecting the data. But a, a best guess is is better than nothing and actually helps collect uh, decent quality data. So you can see there the. Age distribution is pretty heavily skewed towards um, older age groups. Uh, so 70% of members are 50 or over, 52% are 60 or over, so more than half, and 24% are now 70 or over. And it's that last group that's changed quite a lot over the years. So it used to be that 7% of members were 70 or over, and now that's increased to 24%. So really big uh, increase. And only 9% of members are under 30. So shows the extent of that real skew towards older age groups among uh, members that has been growing steadily over time. And we can see that in the average age as well, which will be on the next slide. I'm trying to anticipate what my next slide is and I can't I can't guess. Um, so uh, th this shows the, 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 the differences by styles as well. Uh, and also by organization. So you can see there, Morris Ring slightly uh, has slightly more members that are 50 or over, uh, and other types of sides, so Garland, Mumming, Appalachian, have quite a lot, uh, high proportion of members that are over 50 or over, whereas Rapper, much younger demographic, and actually 37% who are 50 or over, uh, which is in contrast to um, a lot of other styles. Um, this is the bit I thought was coming next, uh, the average age. So you can work out the average age from these different categories, and that's been rising steadily over time. So it was 52 on average back in 2014, and the average age now is roughly 56. So it's been kind of growing at around 
a year, a year and a half, every three years, something like that. Um, and it's been happening across all the um, organizations uh, and just steadily increasing over time. And in fact, you can go back to other surveys that have been done. I get interested in all these historical surveys that have been done uh, by different people um, in different organizations uh, and compare and contrast the data. So um, Barry Kerr did a survey in 1982 and get, kindly gave me his data. Uh, and Brian Tasker also did a survey uh, back in 2010. Uh, and Janet Dowling did a survey of the Morris Federation uh, back in 1996. Um, and in 1998, I think, and she gave me all the um, all the all the uh, all the survey responses, and I need to code them up and do something with them. But anyway, that's a project for another day when I'm less busy. Um, but you can see there again, this kind of this trend isn't a new thing. It's 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 just been a steady upward trend in terms of the um, age proportion. So the proportion of dancers uh, members over age 40 was 23% in 1982, and has increased. Uh, ever since then uh, continually uh, increasing actually it fell last year uh 85% down to 83% uh in terms of the number uh, the proportion of members over 40 uh the average age continued rising uh and then the same in the Morris Federation where the average age was 40 uh, and now has risen, risen steadily up to 56 so these trends aren't exactly new uh and uh yeah they I've been seeing other data that goes further back as well. So that age rise, you can see it in different organizations uh, and you can see and you, you can kind of tell a story of, you know, the reason why we've got so many, uh, why the proportion of 70 or year olds or over has changed a lot in the most recent years is probably because they were 20 when they started aside in the 1970s and time has gone on. Um, and that's partly true because you know the average age of sides that started in the 1970s is 61 um so reasonably uh in line with that but actually it's quite surprising that sides formed in the 2020s so in the last 4 years their average age is 52 so it's not as if the you know the new sides that are forming are full of you know 25 year olds starting the next wave the next generation actually uh it's it's it, it's quite similar to uh to the kind of typical average sides of the moment uh well more generally um it's also the case that new recruits uh tend to be younger as well uh so the average age as i said has been rising uh but also the average age of a new recruit who's someone who's brand new to morris dancing so this isn't people moving side and you know suddenly we, oh we've got a new member but you know they they've been dancing for 30 years down the road this is brand new people who are new to dancing um and you can see there that the the age is a bit lower so it's currently 45 the average age of a recruit um but again it's been steadily rising over time as well um oh, i've already covered this i've done it twice anyway rapper has the youngest age profile as i was as i was saying earlier so uh not only 37 percent 50 or over which is a lot lower than other proportions but also 29 percent are under 30 so again um showing that kind of different quite different age distribution to the rest of the morris world So thinking about uh, other demographics, uh, so since 2017, collected data on ethnicity of members. Um, so the proportion of sides from uh, side members, sorry, uh, from an ethnic group that is not white um, has increased slightly, uh, but it remains very, very small and obviously not uh, representative of the UK population. So it's increased from 0.7% overall to 1.2% in the most recent data. And then if we multiply that up by the number of sides and the number of uh, members, uh, we get to an estimate of around 150 UK Morris dancers from uh, an ethnic group that is not white. Um, and uh, yeah, it's increased in the Morris Federation and increased quite a lot in the Morris Ring in the last three years. Um, so some uh, progress in this measure, but obviously below the representativeness of the UK population. Uh, now, thinking about uh, recruitment, 
So again, this is this is the definition of new to Morris dancing, new to dancing. They haven't danced before, not not people moving side um, and that are still active. So sides are still recruiting. So they have an average number of uh, on average 18 members and on average sides in the last two years um, recruited an, an additional 3.2 uh, new members, which varies a lot uh, by different sides. Uh, so border sides uh, tend to have the highest number of uh, new recruits uh, per side at nearly five uh, per uh, per side. Um, others more in the middle, uh, Appalachian much less so, to 1.1 per, uh, per side. But again, border sides tend to be quite large and Appalachian sides tend to be quite small. So that's maybe reflective of par partly reflective of that rather than just difficulty uh, recruiting. Uh, but that's data on new recruits. Um, and we saw earlier the kind of the change in the gender distribution. So uh, changing from uh, less than half or just under half of members being female to now just over half. Um, and that's been obvious in the data because actually these new recruits are much more likely to be female than they are to be male. So and that and that itself has been increasing over time as well. So in the most recent data, 64 percent, so nearly two thirds of recruits are female and by extension around a third uh, are male. And then also thinking about that change in uh, gender composition in the Morris Ring, there again, we've seen particularly um, in the last two surveys, which was since the um, constitutional change in 2018, that the proportion of new recruits who've been female has risen hugely. So now it's 41% uh, in, the most, in the most recent uh, two years. So this is a really um, big change and push it, pushing us further in the direction of being a uh, majority female um, rather than remaining at the, the current uh, the current kind of almost 50-50 um, at the moment. So there's a big shift going on over time, slowly and steadily um, towards being a majority female. Uh, now, thinking about um, tradition, uh, the importance of tradition, the definition being in the uh, eye of the uh, question uh, person responding uh, to the question, but the question posed was, would your side agree that preserving tradition is an important goal of the side? Um, and actually what we've seen over time is a steady reduction in the number of sides saying this. So it used to be 47% back in 2014, and that's fallen to 39% in the most recent data. Um, and also then, um, particularly in the Morris Ring, where it's fallen from 75% nearly 10 years ago uh, to 59% overall in the most recent data. So a shift going on there in terms of our perception collectively of what tradition means and how important uh, kind of tradition is to two sides. But then to contrast that, um, I also ask, ask a question about repertoire uh, and to what extent repertoire is traditional or as collected. And so there that's been more stable in terms of where material has come from. So I guess there's a there's a um, a contrast there, but then perhaps tradition is about more than just where it comes from, but also how it's interpreted, how it's done uh, and how it's enacted. So that's been much more stable. Uh, but then again, you can see in the um, Morris Ring and Open Morris, a steady shift uh, in terms of less of a d repertoire, dance performance repertoire um, being traditional um, compared to previous years. So, happy time. Um, a majority of UK sides are pretty optimistic about continuing the future. So this has always been the case in every uh, survey that uh, I've done. Um, and yeah, 59% are pretty optimistic. Only 16% are not really that optimistic. Uh, and that doesn't really differ too much uh, by uh, organization. Um, so yeah, so most sides think that they'll still be go still be going in about five years time, which I guess is a more positive spin on on some of the trends uh, that we've been seeing, particularly in the kind of age, di age distribution, which might make you worry about um, sides ability to continue over the next five years. 
Um, since the 2020 survey, well, actually, 2020 survey was just as the pandemic was kind of starting, and I thought, oh, everyone will be stuck at home, so it'd be a nice time to uh, to to, ca- to catch them with a nice survey. Uh, but none of the kind of real impacts of the pandemic had really hit by that point. Uh, so the 2023 survey was the first real chance to kind of think, well, how did the pandemic affect uh, sides? But obviously, we can only survey the sides that are still in existence. Uh, and as I showed on the first slide, the number of sides has actually been uh, falling since 2020. So some sides clearly uh, during or after the pandemic, which may be related to the pandemic or the experience during it, um, have taken the decision to uh, to not continue. Um, but for those sides that did, we asked them, I asked them a few questions. Um, so kind of asking about their prospects. Or do you think their your side's prospects have been made stronger or weaker or about the same? compared to before the pandemic. Uh, and that came out pretty balanced. So about half feel it's about the same and actually more tend to say it's stronger than say it's weaker. So didn't seem to have a kind of overall negative impact on most sides on the face of it. Um, and also uh, some sides got together uh, on Zoom and had regular um, catch ups or Practices. I don't. I, my side didn't, so I don't know how you have a practice uh, on Zoom. Maybe, maybe someone can explain or 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 or, or show how to do it. Uh, I'm sure it's um probably it was probably um quite fun to uh, to organ to organise that and uh, make it happen. But anyway, there were lots of sides that met up regularly, uh, and some that didn't meet at all. Uh, and when we cross tab this data, the uh, it it does seem to show some slight. Uh, tendency towards sides that met regularly, uh, feeling that they're more likely to be stronger in their prospects post-COVID than weaker. And actually, those sides that did not meet uh, were more likely to say they were weaker. But a huge range of views from different sides there. So nothing conclusive, but uh, that may have been a kind of protective factor, if you like, uh, making sure you're meeting up regularly to stay in touch uh, and then pick up where you left off uh once lockdowns were um lockdowns were over yeah god it feels like a lifetime away now doesn't it but we all went through it um cool so i'm nearly there and then you can ask lots of questions if you like um so overall conclusions number of uk morris dancers fell uh in the most recent survey so from 2020 to 2023 fell by about a thousand primarily due to fewer number of active sides. There are more women Morris dancers in the UK than there are men uh, and recruitment trends suggest that's going to keep growing in the future as well. The average age of Morris dancers in the UK has risen steadily and has risen steadily for a long time uh, to now age uh, average age of 56. Uh, A quarter are aged 70 or over but 9% are in, are under 30 only nine percent are under 30. uh there's been a shift in a, in a, a ch- change in the composition of different styles of dance so the number of sides dancing border has grown over time but rapper longsword and mumming sides all dropped in the period from 2020 to 2023 in terms of the number of sides that were active um but maybe on a more positive note more than half are optimistic that they'll still be active in five years time so what do we what do we make of all this uh as a as a a set of uh things to think about well i guess um be useful to have your reflections and your thoughts on what those uh things might be um i've put together uh, some of my own uh in terms of things that i think are useful um takeaways uh so how do we think about uh, achieving greater diversity and inclusion in Morris dancing? Uh, there's some data from there showing um, uh, about the uh, small number of uh, members, dancers from ethnic minority backgrounds. So is that uh, an issue? We need to think about how to achieve greater diversity, making sure our sides are inclusive. Um, given the trends in gender, perhaps we need to think about how to attract more men into dancing in future. You know, I've been um, pleased to set up uh, mixed sides and uh, a women's side as well. 
Um, but I also really appreciate being in a all men's side uh, as a as a as a thing to uh, to to be a part of. Um, so thinking about how we attract more men into dancing in the future, given the trends are shifting us towards uh, being much more um, majority female over time. But also thinking about what might attract more young people into dancing. I think this is one that comes up um, quite a lot. Uh, you see the age distribution, you go, why why aren't more you know, people in their 20s uh, or people in their 30s um, joining, uh, joining sides? And so when I kind of think about the data and think about my own experiences of being in a in various sides um, over the years, I think it's important important things to think about in terms of how we take that agenda forward. So if you're thinking about um, people who are thinking about joining a side, um, they're only likely to join a side if they can see themselves fitting in. So any young person that uh, doesn't see anyone who's of kind of a similar age is going to take a lot more convincing uh, to join that side. So there are sides with lots of older members trying lots of innovative, creative things to recruit, but they're quite likely to find it quite difficult for the basic reason that it just needs to be a critical mass of young people to attract more young people into the side. Um, how do you how do you, uh, how do you do that as well? That, that's quite a, a, a tricky a tricky thing. But there's also um, a sense of when you've got uh, some young members and some old members, that sense of collective agency. So being part of a group can be really uh, exciting. That's when it's forming a new identity, when it's um, kind of uh, going out on a journey, if you like. Um, and I've been part of that kind of setting up sides from scratch. And I've also been part of sides that are um, very well established. So um, I think in, in some circumstances, sides with some young members can be reluctant to kind of hand over the side or hand over the reins to those uh, to the ideas from the from the young people uh, and then find it difficult to then kind of keep them uh, in the side uh, and to uh, to not necessarily let those ideas come. So we have to think about how to attract young people from the point of view of their, them looking in and seeing, does do I fit within this group? But also once in that group, uh, am I part of this group or a kind of are there different levels of partnership within this group? Um, so and I think a good example of this is um, the side that's pictured there, which is the side dance I dance with. Uh, this was the uh, the Headington Quarry Morris Dancers, which is known for its kind of long history, uh, back to William Kimber pictured there uh, and and beyond in terms of uh, time before that. I think everyone's idea of Headington is this idea of kind of long continuity of this side that's been around for a long time. It's been around forever. How did it keep going? And actually, it's not a side of necessarily of continuity because that side you can see there was formed by Bill Kimber with those um, schoolboys. Um, and those schoolboys formed the basis of that side for many decades after that. And actually, that variant of the side was uh, created completely independently of the men's side at the time. So it was kind of a, a, a new uh, iteration of the Headington Quarry side that then continued what the previous iteration of the Headington Quarry side um, was. So what it created was an entirely new side that was that was the represented continuity, but at the same time had a critical mass of young people in it. Uh, and the side, because Kimber died several years after after forming it, it then took on an identity of its own and it became the side that was theirs. So there's a kind of uh, an interesting story there in terms of how sides um, can re remake themselves. Uh, and perhaps this is a good way, you know, sides understandably want to um, continue a side that they've you know, become part of and built. But one model of continuing that side is actually to remake it. Um, so perhaps we need to uh, think about uh, that as an idea uh, to, to kind of take, take sides forward. 
So that's all of me and all my slides. And there's a question in the chat. I will um, share the slides. Very happy to. Um, but otherwise, please let me know if you have any questions. Nicola has a hand up. Hi, Jack. Can you hear me okay? Hello, I can, yes. No. Brilliant. Firstly, great presentation and thank you very much for your time and commitment to doing this because it's, I, it's probably all free for you, right? Yep, <laughs> it's vigorous <laughs> nodding. Okay, so if I followed it correctly, you haven't been able, you're not able from the data to determine what the age is of new incoming members, but it looked like the average age wasn't increasing as fast as time is passing. Hmm. Interesting. Um, no, I've got the age, the full age distribution. I just didn't, um, I didn't show it, but yeah, the, the average age has been growing over time. I think it was from 41 to about 45. So it's been steadily increasing, but maybe not quite at the same rate. So yeah. And there's a huge variation in terms of the age of new recruits for sure. Brilliant. And did you, uh, you showed the optimism statistic, but is, has that changed over time? It hasn't changed very much over time. There's always been a core of kind of science that are not, not that optimistic. Uh, and I did a bit of kind of um, checking the database to basically see whether they had folded. And it seemed to be correlated with uh, some propensity to fold in the future. So it does seem to be telling us something about the future to some extent. Uh, but also, yeah, it hasn't really changed. So it hasn't been a big increase in that at all. Interesting. Brilliant. Really Thank you. Brian? Hi, thank, thanks for that, Jack. Um, I'm the um, IT volunteer with the Morris Fed, been uh, for two or three years, and I was inspired by your previous survey in which you looked and said uh, the evidence suggests that uh, social media wasn't effective as a recruitment. There were, there mm -hmm. were various And so I thought, hmm, don't really believe that. So I looked into it. I've got an interest in the in, in evidence. And what I found was that um, various uses of social media and websites, it wasn't being done correctly. It, you know, mm -hmm. websites weren't being indexed by Google and no wonder nobody could find them. And so I started to try and look at ways of improving the use of, of technologies and in, in particular um, vi video. So Morris is great. It's got vitality. It's got music and the like. So video seems to me the great mechanism for recruiting people, in particular new people. So that was my plan. And then just when you started talking, I looked at the stats for the Morris Fed's YouTube, for the age profile. Um, above the age of 65, 74%. 55 to 64 are 26%. So it's kind of YouTube isn't isn't working for in a Morris Fed sense. And there might be various reasons for this because it's about talks and, and the like. But I've started to look a bit more about the channels that young people use, and it does seem to be TikTok. So I, I wondered if you had any thoughts on, on ways we can gather the evidence of the effectiveness of some of these new channels for recruiting um, young people in particular. Thanks. Yeah, it's a really interesting question. I think, I think probably lots of young people do use TikTok, but they're not necessarily going to engage with, I don't know the uh you know the content of the average morris side who i mean it goes back to that question about kind of you know looking in does it look like the sort of thing that people like me do and you know if you're a young person you're w watching the you know typical random morris side picked out of the the, the hat then it, it's unlikely to look like you so using the channels is one thing but then kind of the content to appeal uh would be quite a different thing um and also, so I, 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 I have collected stats on using social media as a recruitment tool. Um, I chose to take that out of the slides today, but I've got data on it. So 63% have, of sides have used that recently to try and recruit uh, people. 17% um, said it was the most useful, um, which actually is pretty good compared to a lot of others. So the two highest are recruit friends and word of mouth. As being the two um, key methods. So the main ways we recruit as sides 
is through people we know and people we interact with. And social media is another add on to that, but it's kind of that personal connection, which seems to be the thing that I'd say is the most effective for helping them to recruit. It, well, it's also interesting in terms of the whole inclusivity, getting people you, who are your mates isn't necessarily inclusive and address that uh, ethnic diversity and the like. So there's a whole set of issues there. But if, I'll, I'll drop you an email. It'll be, like, be useful to carry on this conversation. So. Yeah, great. Thanks a lot, Jack, for that. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Um, Chris C has their hand up. Hi. Yeah, so I'm the one from Hungary. Um so I have a question about recruitment in general. So as far as I know, I'm the only Morris dancer in the entire country here. So that's pretty easy. Um, but in general, like, how does one go about like recruiting in a culture where people like a few, like I, you know, I'm not so much part of the Hungarian folk dance community but more like the Irish English folk community here. And so there's a few people that are kind of know what it is. Like I've done some jigs and stuff like Nutting Girl. So people are a little bit aware, but how would one recruit from zero, I guess is my question. It's a really good question. Um, I'm not sure the data will be able to help because I guess with <laughs> most of it's based on sides in the UK recruiting from an audience that largely at least have some background knowledge or understanding of what Morris dancing is, um, which I guess would be yeah more challenging in a in a, in a different um, culture entirely, especially where there's um, uh, native uh, folk dancing that's uh, native to that country. So um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if I'm the right person to to give advice, uh, but certainly the the data does show that what sides find is the most useful methods is personal connection so not uh you know at doing um posters or leaflets or giving uh leaflets to the um audience doesn't really come up as kind of the most um eff effective method it's it's kind of you know having a personal connection with people and word of mouth and you know, telling people about it what it is uh, which is hard graft much more than just printing off a leaflet um, but uh, tends to create the kind of personal connection. Okay. <laughs> yeah, great. Thank you. I, I'm I'm trying. I'm trying to raise Morris awareness in Hungary, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck, good luck with that. I <laughs> wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Oh, we have some videos that we produced recently. I'll send you a link to them, Chris. I've got your email address. I'll do that. Okay, um, Eliza. Um, so I've actually got a couple, if that's okay. Um, so um, have you got any data on recruits that are in like multiple sides? So not brand new recruits, but people moving from one side to another and the age range of those people when they're moving sides or people who dance with multiple sides. Um, and also, um, I'm quite interested to know if it's the younger population that tend to dance with multiple sides or whether it's an older age demographic. Um, and the other question is, you've collected some data on minority groups already. And so you've got um, like uh, gender groups and obviously ethnic minorities, but you haven't got any on neurodiversity at all. Um, and I'd be very, very keen to see that because being a neurodivergent person, I think that's quite important. Thank you for your question. So, well, questions. If I could take the first one first, um, I completely neglected, I meant to do it, and then I completely neglected to add a slide, uh, which is on the website, um, but I didn't add anything on it, which was a new question that we added this year, um, which was um, about disability. So there was an additional inclusion angle added. Uh, so uh, Sides reported that 3% of members um, had a disability. So I completely forgot to add that. I'm sorry. And it's on there. Uh, and that was 6% in Open Morris uh, and 1.8% in the Morris Ring. So you can go and see those uh, stats on the website. They are up there. Um, we actually discussed um, uh, neurodivergence as an additional thing to ask. So I think part of the part of the challenge there is about asking the um the survey is designed based on on someone responding on behalf of the rest of the side 
Um, so we have to take into account when designing and thinking about questions, whether they will have accurate knowledge of a thing. And like I said, with age, you know, sometimes it's not perfectly accurate information, but it's close enough. Um, and we just need to make sure that anything we ask uh, is kind of reasonable for to ask on behalf of someone else. Now, it's a separate project I would love to do, which is to one day uh, do a an individual Morris Dancers survey. So you can ask much more individual questions about individuals' own experiences. Uh, and also then it would be um, much more uh yeah much more reliable to ask questions such as uh yours um so i think that would be something i'd love to do in future so thank you for raising it and thank you for asking the question that's that's why it wasn't included in uh this uh, survey despite it being uh, an important issue to um to to look at so something i'd love to look at in the future um, um, can, can we talk more about that at some point can can i drop you an email of course yes please thank do you. yeah um, your other question was about age of, so we, so I've got the age distribution of new recruits. I don't have the age distribution of people who are, so I, I collected some data on the number of people who joined the side, but were not new to dancing. So as in they've moved from another side or had previously danced, um, they haven't got any age distribution of data like that because that was just a kind of, you know, it was a bit of a. It would have been too much information uh, to ask, but again, oh, and also about uh, people in multiple sites. So I didn't ask about the age distribution there. Again, that would be something really interesting to be able to look at in an individual survey, um, where you could ask individual age, get much more reliable data, and also then ask those follow-up questions about you know different types of um, diversity, and also uh, questions about. Uh, you know, are they in multiple mem uh, members of multiple sides and things like that? So I think there's much more possibility with an individual survey that would open up a lot of these questions and a lot of these uh, issues and be able to answer them. Um, but yeah, the, the the balance in terms of a a side based survey means that um, some of them are quite difficult to justify uh, when designing it. But thanks for your questions. Great questions. Thank you. Uh, other questions? Um, as a filler, I can can if I could pass on um, some a tip that came out of the JMO recruitment workshop that we did is that uh, Phoenix Morris um, said that they run a Duke of Edinburgh award scheme and they uh, contact their local schools and say, why don't you come along and do Morris Dancing? You can get a DOV award for it. And they have found that really, really successful in um, in recruiting a younger generation. And they've got now a massive wide uh, age range in their team. So uh, I'd just like to pass that one on because uh, mm. it seems like a fantastic idea. Anyway, any more questions? I can pass on another suggestion as a, oh, oh. Gov a governor of a primary school, which is that um, schools have something called the PE and sports premium, which can be spent on all, all sorts of things. And actually, that'd be, you know, a lot, a lot of schools find it difficult to find the provision for, you know, wow, God, I've been given this money. What do I spend it on? Because <laughs> it's ring fenced for activity and uh, and uh, kind of things related to PE and sports. I think dance would fit perfectly within that and sort of thing. So, you know, offering to come in even with a paid opportunity, you know, schools have this money to spend and it's, and it's ring fenced. So um, yeah, another opportunity perhaps. Is that junior schools or senior schools, Jack, or both? I think it's primary schools. Primary schools. No, yeah. five to eight, five, five to 11. Yeah. You can, um, th there is um, something at secondary school, because I know that Stefan Kerr did um, something to do with Morris dancing for his GCSE. I don't know the details, but his father Simon in uh, Moulton was telling me about it, so it is possible. Yep, secondaries would probably be open to it as well. But I know it's definitely uh, dedicated money, and it's for primary schools. Yeah. Okay, great. I think we should we should put that on all the three orgs websites somewhere. I think and dig find out a bit more about that. Excellent. Uh, has anybody else got any questions or any uh, top tips? We're recruiting younger people while we're on that subject. Massive amount of hard work. Thanks very much, Jack. It's yeah, always thank really you, thank interesting. You very much, yeah. 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 Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Thanks for having me and thanks for encouraging me, particularly Pauline.